Hi everyone. So, uh, in working on the last RTS tutorial, which this video does actually relate to, so I believe that's video 102, um, I, I realized I missed, did not explain something clearly, and I kind of feel remiss not explaining it. I kind of did a, well, I did kind of, I did a live stream working on this project, and I had a bit of a rant there about this issue. I thought I recorded said rant for YouTube for the purpose of addressing the problem in that RTS video, but apparently I didn't. So I want to explain some stuff again, just real quick here related to that RTS video. Um, I just want to grab our, so this is not clearly the RTS project. Um, I'm going to point out what I'm doing here real quick. So we have this player controller here and you can see we're using that same interface. Now I'm going to tell you right now, this, well, that isn't going to go away, but Everything else here is going to go away. Anytime I use this reference, which again is being got through an interface, I am going to be deleting it and iterating something else in. This is just so it's easier for me to work with right now. So why is that? And that comes down to that size issue I was talking about earlier. And I, I, gave, I explained part of it. I explained that part accurately, but there are some issues. So I'm just going to take some notes. I'm going to bring that back onto screen. By the way, those are notes directly related to this project. I want you to take a look at the size map. It's the player controller, and it's 48.8. We're just gonna make a note of that. It's 48.8. Now, let's look at what's in here. We have our uh, character. There's our player character. And there's the actual, there are the widgets. We're gonna, of course, not be able to get rid of that. There is the actual blueprint we care about, and there's our other widget. So there's two widgets in this game, by the way. Um, we're, we're not gonna be able to get rid of this. This is what we kind of expect to see. This, however, this we can get rid of. So why, <coughs> sorry about that. So why, if interfaces are so good, uh, do we, we have that issue? And if you don't believe me that that's what we're getting, uh, let's look at the size map for the character. Hey, look, it's 45.8. So, like what we know, and we can, sorry, it's 45. And we can see again, the sound effects the two montages, the animations. So what's what's going on here? Well, the issue is actually the interfaces. This is bad. Very, very bad. So if we go back to our interfaces folder for a moment, uh, I have four interfaces. I have the player controller one and the player character ones up here. Just wanna open up the player character one for a moment, because that's just the first one there. We're gonna get the size map. That number look familiar to anybody? 45.8. Okay. Well, what's going on? Well, why is that the same? Now, I'm going to tell you, this one will be different. This one will not be 48.8. Oh, whoa. Okay, that's, that's in kilobytes. Okay, so maybe we should start tagging these just to make this a little bit more obvious what's happening here. Okay, 9.4 kilobytes. All right, <clears throat> let me just hit the save. And again, sorry for clearing my throat. I'm probably not gonna be able to edit this in time to release it with the tutorial. So what's going on here? Well, what's going on here is well, I'm pretty sure I did this in the character, so I, I hope this is the right one. Um, yeah, it is. Okay. Let's see. Sorry, this is a bunch of testing for stuff. Um, actually, I might not do it in here. Uh, We're just gonna go here. Trigger stress timer. Uh, I do it in the enemy actually for that one. So if we go to the enemy, let's look at the enemy. Actually, let's go back here. Let's go to our our uh, characters. Let's go to our enemy, and I'm gonna show you where I trigger it. So if we, and this is all gonna go away. By the way, this is just to test some lo test some logic out. So there it is. This is where we trigger it, right? This is where we trigger it. Now what I want to do is I'm actually going to get the size map for our enemy open here. It's going to be big. 
but notice it's 46.5. Well, let's just expand this a bit. What do we get? Well, most of the AI is over there. It doesn't have the sound stuff. This is being picked up by the enemy controller. The enemy controller is getting the interface. Notice the interface there, size 48.8. Uh, but I just show, and that's the interface for the player character. Do you see the interface for the controller here? The interface for the controller isn't visible, and yet I just showed you that we are using that interface. Now, if you haven't worked out what's happening here yet, if you haven't worked out the issue, why we're getting these size differences and that being the same, and why I said I'm going to, in my uh, controller, oh, that's the enemy controller, sorry, in my player controller, get rid of this, well, it's because, as I said, this is a bad, this is a very bad way to do something. And I know I did it in the last tutorial, but I was wanting to get some of the interface basics in, and I realized I probably should have spent more time covering this. So, what what's happening here? Well, we're actually doing the same as casting. We're making a copy when we do this. We're making a hard copy. That That's that size issue. So let's go back to the interface folder. I'm going to demonstrate this. Again, I'm going to bring this back up onto the size map. It's going to be that kilobyte one. I'm going to make this of over 40 megabytes in just one function. There we go. There's our bad function. This is a player controller, so clearly I'm going to want to return our player controller. So what we're going to do is we're going to find our in this uh, project called primary player controller. And we're going to save that. We're going to compile and save that. Let's take a look at the size map here. It's nearly 50 gigabytes. Sorry, uh, megabytes. Gigabytes. So, uh, bad interface is now 48.8. Now let's go back to our enemy. Let's see what, what's happened to, oh, it's our enum, sorry. Let's go back to our enemy. Let's go to our enemy master. Let's open up that size map. It's gone off a fair, it's gone off a megabyte. But what's going on here is when you and your interfaces have a return node like this, it's taking that information, it's copying all of it. So that's how you access those functions. So this is bad. What you really should be doing anytime that we're casting, you should probably be using an interface message. And as I said, let's just pop uh, these open. So this I can use to set if the character is dead as an interface. I override it. In fact, if we go to the player character, let's find that interface. We just, or sorry, that's which one we're looking at? The set is dead. This is actually misleading. And that's going to be, I can't delete it, can I? Nope. Um, sorry, the reason why I said this is misleading is there actually is no return. So we're going to start with the get is dead, actually. So we, we have this. This get is dead. I can use this to get if the character is dead. In fact, actually, I do. It's in the enemy. And we have that right there. Get is the character dead. But notice I'm, I'm doing it this way. I could actually do something else here instead. But um, it, it is a bit tricky to do. Because um, I want this in. Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking through. Actually, I am going to be iterating through. I could do uh, get... Sorry, I, I'm not here to show you that. I would be getting rid of this and using a different target to get the is dead. Now, that is just returning, and that's one of the downsides to um, interfaces, a variable. I can't make it a pure function. Now, 
I have this set is dead. And if we kill the character, then we're going to set the character to dead. That way the certain animations stop playing, certain events stop happening. So if we go to our player character here, notice we have set is dead. Notice it is a different color, and that's because it's an event. I don't think I should ever implement it, do I? I do. So all we're doing is we're setting this. But anything that can uh, call that interface can call this. It doesn't need to have a reference to the player. We can get rid of this, and we actually will decrease our size maps quite considerably and make it slightly better code. So, ooh, I should not have actually done that. Um, should have done this one first just to make sure. So if you're going to use interfaces and you want to deal with that size map issue and the copying issue, do not make references like we just did. I did it as practice to show you how to work with interfaces, but you really should just be using the event. So instead of having, actually, what we, again, what we can do, let's just show you as an example. Instead of having this, where we get the player character, we're gonna do this on the enemy here. Uh, you can get, you know, you can say get player controller, do this, get player controller, do this. Um, where is the one I was looking at earlier? So, get player character. And I can, if I can plug it in, I can break that. This will work. I could also switch this out to Uh, sorry, I could just do this instead here as an example. And that's what I just do and duplicate that. There. Is this equal to our player character? If it is, branch. Um, we're actually going to plug that into... We're actually, we can't because it's the wrong type, but I'd, I'd remake this variable because I do want a player reference this way I uh, have something there. I'd remake the variable as an object. So we pull off of here and just do promote to variable the pawn, object pawn ref. Suddenly, we can just do that instead. If this is true, that's where we're setting it. We're actually gonna get rid of this in this example. So I'm gonna leave these plugged in because I'm not ready to iterate to do this step, but I'm just showing you what it would look like instead. So we're checking, is it the player character is this thing that we're sensing the player character if it is we're gonna just set that object there and honestly at this point i could use that instead of the uh, get player controller and i'd still be saving the size thing or size issue sorry i'm just gonna undo all of this because i'm not at the stage of that part of the iteration yet so if you're working with interfaces yes Proper use, and that's the key word, proper use of interfaces are more efficient than casting. Improper uses of interfaces, like getting a reference where you are setting that to be the return, but the, the thing that you're actually not casting to is the same as casting. Now, if you need a reference, if you need to do something like this where you get a reference, then use inheritance to your advantage. Um, use the smallest version of the base class possible. So I don't have my other pro so I don't have my other project open, which is a bit sad. And I was going to show you wh what I mean by this, um, which is my um, Dark Souls like project or template that I'm working on. Um, <clears throat> in that. When I want to get certain information, the by the way, the enemy and player uh, characters have the same parent class. It is a custom, uh, well, it is a custom BP class, actually it's C++ in this case, of a base character where events that the NPCs and players that share, like dying, are, have the event nodes in the um, parent class. So if you're doing something that way, where they share the same class, like, it, you can use sorry let me get the interface back the parent class in there alternatively you can go a class higher and go character and grab the character or even higher pawn object 
It, it doesn't matter as long as it's somewhere in the hierarchy above what you're looking for. If you need a if you don't need very if you don't need all the access to those functions, then you can actually just put them in here. You can use that reference of a lower level. So if I actually decide that hey, I don't want to go through all my code and uh, get rid of this. I'm going to break it either way. I could change this to be a pawn reference or a character reference because all I'm doing is I'm really trying to replace this node here with this node. Not at this stage, by the way. Uh, what I mean by that is, let me just find where I use my player reference. Here, get actor location. I'm doing nothing here that I can't do with a get player character. I could plug that into there. That, that doesn't change anything. Uh, sorry, these are all just test things, by the way. Um, I could leave this in and have it, if I change this to a different class in my interface, have that be a object, a character, a pawn. But those are going to be smaller sizes. So it's not copying everything that's unique to my particular char player character class. So again, avoid using the return as a, actu as a repl full replacement for the cast. It isn't the, the class that you are creating or that you're wanting to find. Either just use events, setters, and getters, like I have displayed with the get is dead, or use something higher in the inheritance chain to address that size issue. Okay, I've been ranting at you for 16 minutes about this, so I'm just gonna stop recording because I will not have time to edit this. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.